Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson. Yes, the day after Trump crushes Nikki Haley in New Hampshire. It was beautiful. I'm going to do a post-election analysis show on that. You will not want to miss it. I have pulled clips from all over the place, and I have people on the ground in New Hampshire. And I've got some more breaking news in that story, exclusive to Lumberjack Logic. Things did not go that smoothly in New Hampshire, and we're going to have that report. So make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications on. But let's watch this clip from Rona, and we are going to unpack this. Looking at the math and the path going forward, and I don't see it for Nikki Haley. I think she's run a great campaign, but I do think there is a message that's coming out from the voters, which is very clear. We need to unite around our eventual nominee, which is going to be Donald Trump. Okay, need to interject here. I do not trust Rona Romney McDaniel. I want you to understand that. Any of you who have followed my channel for a while understand that I think this woman needs to go. See, she calls for unity just like she called for unity after the botched elections in 2022. After it came out that she was spending your donor money on her hairdos and private jets and alcohol, okay? This is not the woman we need running the RNC. And she's calling for unity simply because she doesn't want to be under the microscope. She also realizes that Donald Trump is inevitable at this point, but that doesn't mean she is on your team. And we need to make sure we beat Joe Biden. It is 10 months away till the November election, and we can't wait any longer to put our foot on the gas, to beat the worst president, to beat a president that's kept our borders open, allowed fentanyl to pour through, allowed inflation to, to go rampant. He is hurting the American people, and we need to do everything we can to unite so that we can defeat him. There you go. Rona's on the Trump train, folks. I mean, this woman, she's all in. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine the backroom talks after the leak call with Jeff DeWitt, the chairman of the Republican Party in Arizona, trying to buy off Carrie Lake? Can you imagine the backroom chatter? I mean, I'm sure her uncle's been on the phone. Mitt's calling her up. I don't know what to do, Rona. It looks like, you know, he's going to win. Look, I mean, we're going to New York City. My bundlers, uh, Paul Ryan, we're going to do some things. We're going to try and get Nikki back up there, but you better just kind of come out on the train. Trump train so it'll save your skin i mean like it, when you watch braveheart and you know we'll uh we'll condemn this from our lands in the south and support it from our lands in the north you know and thereby making all these people happy this is politics it's so disgusting people and this woman is deep in it so again i don't trust her but i i agree we need unity i mean i want all the DeSantis supporters i want all the haley supporters um, even though we're not going to get all the Haley supporters because so many of them are Democrats, as you'll see here. We asked folks coming into the polls, do you identify as a Republican? Do you identify as a, a Democrat or do you identify as an independent? And here's what we found in this exit poll so far. And I think this jumps right out at you. A minority of voters in this first wave of the exit poll in the Republican primary identify as Republicans, a majority 53% identify as either independents, 45%, or, and this is a high number historically, 8% identify as Democrats. For some context here, in 2016, the last competitive Republican primary, presidential primary in New Hampshire, the electorate was 55% Republican. It was 42% independent, and it was 3%. Democratic. Mm. So in this initial wave, you're seeing some significant differences from 2016. So as you can see from those numbers, Nikki Haley was propped up by Democrat support. And do you know what I find so fascinating about this? All of these pundits are telling us that Nikki Haley is the only one that can beat Joe Biden. Donald Trump would lose in a head to head matchup. I mean, if you, look, the game is afoot. If that were the case, why would they want Nikki Haley to win? Why would they be encouraging Democrat voters who are actually, they register as independents, but they're actually Democrats. Why would they be encouraging them to vote for Nikki Haley and vote against Donald Trump if Nikki Haley's the one that can beat Joe Biden and Donald Trump doesn't stand a chance? Wouldn't they want Joe Biden back in there? Hmm. Anyways, we got more post-election analysis. Make sure you catch that show. It's going to be later today. So make sure you're subscribed. And make sure to support the sponsor, MyPillow. That's right, MyPillow.com. Promo code Lumberjack for big, big savings. Peace out.